Men at Work. That is literally the name of the band, I'm assuming. I have no idea what this is. But apparently, I'm about to react to Men at Work Down Under. I'm assuming it's a band, but not completely sure. So let's go ahead and do the research. But can I just say, Men at Work is a great name for a band. And I mean, Men at Work, I guess I could join the band because I am definitely a man that is constantly working. So just want to throw my name in, in, in consideration. But. Here we go. Men at Work are an Australian rock band formed in Melbourne in 1978 and best known for their breakthrough hits such as Down Under, Who Can It Be Now, Be Good Johnny, Overkill, and It's a Mistake. Okay, so they got a few big hits. Well, well, it said breakthrough hits. Well, okay. Let me let me not let me shut up. Its founding member and frontman is Colin Hay, who performs on lead vocals and guitar. After playing as an acoustic duo with Ron Stryker, Stryker during 1978 and 79, Hay formed the group with with Stryker playing bass guitar and Jerry Spicer on drums. They were soon joined by Greg Ham on flute, saxophone, and keyboards, and John Rees on bass guitar, with Stryker switching back to lead guitar. The group was managed by Russell DePeller, a friend of Hay, whom he had met at La Trobe University. This lineup achieved national and international success during the early to mid-1980s. In January 1983, they were the first Australian artist to have a simultaneous number one album and number one single on the United States Billboard's charts. Business as usual and down under. Okay. Respectively, with the same works, they achieved the distinction of a simultaneous number one album and number one single on the Australian, New Zealand, and United Kingdom charts. Oh wow, so what we about to react to is like one of the biggest songs ever, I'm guessing. If it was number one in every country. They won a Grammy Award, 1983 for Best New Artist. Inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame in 1994. They have sold 30 million copies worldwide. 1984, Spicer and Reese were asked to leave the group, leaving Hay, Ham, and Stryker as a trio, accompanied by, accompanied by session musicians. They were asked to leave by who? I'm going to assume other band members or the manager, but that's a first. I don't think I've ever seen or read that members were asked to leave. They were either straight up kicked out or they, you know, they left on their own terms or died or something like that. I've never seen were asked to leave the group. I've never read that before. During the recording of the Two Hearts album, Stryker decided to leave. Wow. Soon after 1985, Ham left also, leaving Hay as the sole remaining member. Hay elected to work as a solo artist shortly thereafter in the early 196 in, in early 1986. And the men at work name was retired. Damn, so Hay just ran everybody away? No pun intended. Um, damn, like everybody just left. I wonder what happened. I, I, yeah, I know I'm nosy. Yeah, I know I'm nosy. Uh, Stryker had left during its production. Oh, 
Oh, long-standing tensions between Hay and Spicer led to a split in the band. Both Reeves and Spicer were told they were not, not required, as Hay, Ham, and Stryker used session musicians to record. That's just crazy. But yeah, it sounds like Hay seems to be the common factor in all of these stories. So I don't know what Colin did, but okay. Well, anyway, Men at Work, Down Under, and it's an official music video in HD. And this came out in what year? 81, I think it said. 82? Yeah. 81 okay well I'm ready to hear it down under this is the first hit that they label in regards to their breakthrough hit so let's see if it was really this good let's go In a fight I'd come be On a hippie trail head full of zombies I met a strange lady She made me nervous She took me in and gave me breakfast And she said Do you come from a land down under? A women go and men wonder Can't you hear, can't you hear the thunder? Fine bread from a man in Brussels. He was six foot four and full of muscle. I said, Do you speak my language? He just smiled and gave me a Vegemite sandwich And he said, I come from a land down under Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, I don't even know how to describe this record Um, <laughs> It's very poppy Um I'm trying to think of somebody to compare them to. But I guess this would fall under the tree of rock. Well, I, I don't think it's nothing to guess. It definitely falls under the umbrella of rock and roll. But it's very poppy. Um, almost childlike. Not just the music video, but the actual lyrics. And... Is almost like a not spoken word, but is a uh, it's a conversational tone. Like it's, it's not it, he's not singing per se. There's no vocals in this, and the way it's mixed is very strange. I don't think I've ever heard a song mixed like this. And when I mean mixed, like how the audio, like how I'm hearing the the, the vocals. Like the the instrumentation part sounds good, but it sounds like his vocals is almost like I can tell that he was in like a, a padded room or a closed room. Um just some small stuff that I'm noticing, but I could tell this was a fun record that everybody loved. And I tell y'all all the time, you want a hit record, you either appeal to the kids or the women. And this definitely, I don't know if women, uh, well, y'all let me know. Were well, women listening to this? It, it Again, the, the lyrics in the video, it almost come across as like cartoonish. So I could see a lot of kids liking this record. Um, but I like it. It's cool. I like it. Can't you hear, can't you hear the thunder? Yeah. 
Okay, that was cool. That was cool. It was kind of short, but it did only say three minutes forty seconds. Okay. Again, I could definitely see why this was a why this was a hit record. I can't. Um, originally released in nineteen eighty one as the B side to their first local single, Key Punch Operator, released before the band signed with Columbia Records. I didn't even read what uh, labels they were signed to. Both early songs were written by the group's co-founders, Colin Hay, Ron Stryker. Uh, the early version of Down Under has a slightly different tempo and arrangement from the later Columbia version. Best known version released in 81 as the second single from Men at Work's debut album, Business as Usual. Number one in Australia in December 1981, then topped in New Zealand in February 1982. Top Canadian charts in October 1982. Debuted at number six in the U.S. on November 6, 1982. Oh no, it debuted at number 79 and reached number one in January 1983 in the States. Stayed number one for four non-consecutive weeks. It eventually sold two million copies in the U.S. alone. Went number one in Denmark, Ireland, Italy, Switzerland, and was top ten in many other countries. Down Under is perceived as a patriotic song in Australia. It remains popular and is often played at sporting events. Hmm, okay. Slang and drug terms are featured in the lyrics. It opens with the singer traveling in a fried out combi on a hippie trail, head full of zombie. Okay. I'm trying to figure out fried out combi. I'm Clearly they're talking about the truck. But okay. Head full of zombie. That's pretty. Oh, okay. They're, they're about to tell me if I keep reading. In Australian slang, fried out at that time meant that it's in really poor condition and overheating. Got you. Got you. I feel like that's, I mean, that's what we say out in D.C. We be like, yo, fried out. And that usually means like terrible condition. So, okay. I I understood that part. But it says combi is short for combina- ah, combination craft wagon. Gotcha. And refers to the Volkswagen. Gotcha. I was like, what the hell is a combi? I've never heard of a combi. 
Well, okay. Uh, and full of zombie refers to the use of a type of marijuana. I I kind of consider usually when people say zombie, they're usually talking about somebody spaced out on drugs. Um, so I kind of got that. I didn't think marijuana. I was thinking something a little stronger. But okay. Hippie Trail refers to the subcultural tourist route and popular uh, in the 1960s and 70s, which stretched from Western Europe to Southeast Asia. Gotcha. To chunder means to vomit. Okay. I did not know that. Chunder. See, I'm learning. I'm learning words and everything from this. The song is is also the walkout music for Australian former UFC featherweight champion Alexander Vela. I did not know that. I did not know that was what he... <laughs> okay. Down Under was one of the gold songs for Australia during the 2022 FIFA World Cup. The song was ranked number 96 on VH1's 100 Greatest Songs of the 1980s. Oh, wow, so this is a really, like, widely decorated song. Copyright lawsuit. Oh, no. Oh, somebody copywritten off of them. Okay. I was a little worried, but okay. Oh, wow. Colin Hay has since suggested that the deaths of his father, Jim, in 2010 and men at work flute player Greg Ham in 2012 were directly linked to the stress of the court case. Wow. Yeah, see, that's why I, I like I really I won't say I'm fascinated with copyright stuff but y'all yeah, notice anytime we have that copyright talk you know we had a good amount with zeppelin and elvis i'm really intrigued by that type of stuff because it is it's serious business when 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 people and i i don't think viewers not that you should care but um i'm sure some of your favorite youtubers have kind of succumb or fallen or just completely quit YouTube because of how how stressful that copyright stuff is. Obviously, since I react to a lot of music and a lot of licensed content, obviously I deal with it all the time. And um, it's, it's, it's rough, it's rough. And again, we just YouTubers, we just people reacting to it. So I can only imagine what it's like when somebody steals something from you and like try to profit off of it as if it's theirs like with us like we i mean we put it in our titles we put it in the in the bio in the description like you know what i mean we let it be known like this is not our song this is just a reaction to such song so i can only imagine when somebody actually takes something purposefully and try to monetize off of it like that's that's a rough one. Um, but yeah, again, I... So, I'll be completely honest. Is this a song that I'm going to listen to again? Probably not. Uh, but I did like it. I, I, it kind of reminded me of like a... Um, like a 80... Terrible, terrible uh, comparison. Um, you know, I, I won't even say it. But it's a very pop, anybody could hear it and enjoy it type of record. It's nothing, again, instrumentation-wise, there was nothing that really wowed me. Vocally, Colin didn't do anything that like amazed me. But it was just a good, fun record, which is fine. It's just really fine. I tell people that I tell you guys that all the time. I don't have to be amazed with every reaction to like it. Now, 
usually y'all send me stuff that amazes me. So, you know, uh, the, the bar is kind of high. But, you know, if it's a, just a good song, I appreciate that too. And this was just a good song. Just a good, fun, catchy song. But probably not something I'm going to listen to a lot. Again, the bar is really high. It's kind of hard to hear this. Or it's kind of hard to hear something like, uh, you know, uh, I'm just thinking, uh, Johnny Cash Hurt. And then you hear this, and it's like, it's almost two completely, it's almost two completely different worlds. You know what I mean? And, and not even just talking about the genre of music, the quality, right? Like Johnny Cash, his voice, the the song, the video, everything is so much that went into it. Um, and not that a lot wasn't put into this, but cl there's just a clear difference, you know what I mean, in regards to quality, you know. So, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'm down to hear some more. Y'all let me know if men at work, clearly they got a bunch of other hits. So, if, if I need to check them out, y'all just let me know. And we definitely will, all right? As always, like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate y'all for watching. Until next time with Men at Work. Peace.